Have you ever added an item to your online shopping cart and had the website give you a suggestion on another item you might like to purchase? You know, people who bought that pair of hiking boots also purchased this bag of granola. Maybe you've been a little surprised by the suggestion, but then you thought, hey, wait, I actually would like that bag of granola. How did this website make such a clever suggestion for two seemingly unrelated items? It's not magic, and it's not guesswork. It's that the website is most likely using an analytics technique called affinity analysis. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of how affinity analysis works its magic when you shop online. You might be very surprised to find that things that appear unrelated actually have similarities, or, in the language of the analytics technique, a high affinity for each other. In this flowchart, you could see we start off here on the left with our previous transactions. Next, we compute a set of rules. Then, we pick the best rules to use. And finally, we use those rules when we make our business decisions. Imagine that you're in the online gourmet grocery business. Your list of previous transactions could look like this. Let's look back at our flowchart and focus on the previous transactions part. Now let's take a look at our transactions. Let's say we look at who is buying what. We see that customer one has oatmeal, beans, and pasta in the cart. Customer two has beans, jelly, coffee, oatmeal, and popcorn. We track what everybody buys. You could see it's quite a list. We express a rule according to the following syntax. The antecedent is what comes before. In other words, it's what the customer already has in the cart. The consequent is what comes after. It's what we want to consider suggesting as an addition to the cart. Now we're in the compute set of rules part of our flowchart. Rules we could compute from our grocery data include the following. This is the most simple rule. It says if the customer starts with an empty basket, he or she will put oatmeal in it. In a minute, we'll assign probabilities and other measures of how good a rule is, but for now, let's just focus on the syntax of these rules. Slightly more complex rule is this one. This one has popcorn as our antecedent. This means that the customer already has popcorn in the cart. So if popcorn is in the cart, this rule says that oatmeal will also be added to the cart. The rules can get even fancier. This rule has two antecedents, popcorn and coffee. This means the customer already has popcorn and coffee. And this rule says the customer will put oatmeal in the cart too. There can be many reasons to put oatmeal in the cart. Are customers making breakfast for themselves, their kids, or maybe baking cookies? The beauty of affinity analysis is it doesn't get into any of this. It specifically does not care if you are going to eat the oatmeal or bathe in it. Affinity analysis is pure statistical data mining of item associations, not customer psychology. So let's dive in a bit more on these associations. We're still on the compute set of rules in our flowchart. As you can imagine, it's easy to generate a very large number of rules from your customer's transaction data. Here's a list of just a few rules our online grocery transactions can generate. Now we're going to focus on picking the best rules to use. How can we tell which ones are the best rules? We use three measures, confidence, support, and lift. Confidence measures just what it says. How confident are we that this rule will apply? Remember, the antecedent is the first part of our rule, and the consequent is the second. For this example, I'll illustrate with this rule. This rule says if customers have coffee in their carts, they will also add oatmeal to their carts. Our affinity analysis software calculates a confidence measure for each rule. It comes out as a number between zero and one. If the confidence is zero, it means we have no confidence. This would imply there was never a transaction with both coffee and oatmeal in it. If the confidence is one, it implies that every transaction with coffee also had oatmeal in it. Generally speaking, the higher the confidence, the more frequently these two items occur together. We can calculate the confidence for a few of our rules and put them in a table. The first rule in our table says if a customer has coffee and oatmeal in the cart, we are quite confident she will also add popcorn. The rules have been sorted so the highest confidence rules are at the top. Note how the first rule is our best rule and it also has more information in it. 
it has two items in the antecedent, coffee and oatmeal, whereas the others have only one. Together, coffee and oatmeal predict popcorn with much higher confidence than just coffee did alone. Now, what if a rule has a lot of confidence but occurs so rarely we would almost never encounter it? We use another measure to gauge frequency, support. The support of a rule is a measure of how frequently all the terms involved occur. Our affinity analysis software also calculates support for each rule. Support is also a number between zero and one. If the support is zero, it means this combination never happened. This would also imply that there was never a transaction with both coffee and oatmeal in it. If the support is one, it means every single transaction in our data set contained both coffee and oatmeal. Something with a support of 0.2 would have those items occurring together in 20% of our overall transactions. Generally speaking, the higher the support, the more frequently these two items occur in your entire data set. We can calculate the support of different rules and put that in a table as well. Here, the rule with the most support says if a customer has cereal in his cart, he will also put coffee in the cart. The support for this is 0.23, which means it occurs in 23% of our past transactions. The higher the support for a rule, the more frequent the combination is. By this measure, our cereal implies coffee rule is our best rule. Now, we've covered how to use confidence and support to determine which rules to use. The final measure is lift. Lift is a measure of how well the rule performs overall. A lift of 1.0 means the rule performs exactly the same as random chance. No better, no worse. A lift of 2.0 means a rule performs twice as well as random chance would predict. Our software will calculate the lift for us as well. Let's say it tells us that this particular rule performs 1.43 times better than random chance. What does this mean in plain English? Let's say a customer has a baseline probability of adding oatmeal to the cart. If we know he already has coffee in the cart, he's 143% more likely to add oatmeal to the cart. The bigger the lift number, the stronger the association. We can calculate the lift of our rules and put those in a table as well. This table shows that our first rule, when a customer already has coffee and oatmeal in the cart and then adds popcorn, has a lift of 4.31. This implies that this happens 4.31 times more frequently than one would expect to occur by random chance. We like to sort our rules by lift so that the best ones here float to the top. Now let's tie it all together. Our R software will give you all three measures as output, and we can choose the rules to implement. Generally speaking, we want to pick the rules with the highest lift. We'd recommend about 1.10 or greater for at least 10% better than random chance. Enough support. Here I'd recommend 0.05 or greater for at least 5% of your transactions. And higher confidence. This will depend on your data, but higher is better and one is the best. The table here shows all our rules and their support, confidence, and lift. We sorted the rules so the best ones are at the top. Based on these parameters, our winning rules are listed here. Let's look back at our flowchart. We are at the use those rules portion of it now. So now, if you're the grocery shop and a customer has coffee and oatmeal in the shopping cart, you can recommend the popcorn without hesitation. If the customer has chocolate and oatmeal, you can recommend the pasta. And that's the magic. Now, the next time you shop online, you'll know how affinity analysis is working behind the scenes.